Okay, welcome back. Um, my name is Melissa. If you didn't tune into my last uh, little module, uh, this module is dedicated specifically on how structure is going to help you navigate through the next couple of weeks, months, uh, and basically how it can save your life. So we're just gonna jump in. If you have questions after I finish the presentation and after this module, please feel free to shoot me an email. I'm hoping that this just provides a bit of an overview as to why putting structure in can be so beneficial and maybe some different ideas and strategies that you can incorporate into your routine that you have right now. So why structure is really important specifically for right now is actually for a couple of different reasons. And I will preface this whole thing by saying, and I think I've said this a couple of different times, go easy on yourself during this time. Um, nobody's expecting perfection out of you. Again, this is uh, a brand new experience for so many of us. And so all I can say to begin with is uh, don't try not to be so hard on yourself when we're trying to navigate through some of this stuff. Um, but there is uh, a benefit in trying to actually navigate through and try to implement different things that maybe we haven't in the past or maybe solidifying things that we are naturally already including into our day-to-day, -day, week to week and so on. One of the reasons why we include structure and why it's important is kind of to have that sense of predictability. And especially because much of our life has been almost uprooted, so to speak. Um, it just seems like what things that are kind of are going around us right now might seem a little bit chaotic. So when we're incorporating structure, that kind of helps to incorporate almost a sense of control back into our power. And that can be really helpful when we're living kind of in ambiguity and the unknowns. And if we're really anxious, this can be a really powerful tool to use. The second thing is to develop a sense of mastery and having motivation throughout the day. So uh, if you, whether you have a pre-existing mental health condition or you're starting to feel really down and kind of feeling a little bit blue, um, by implementing some sort of calendar or any sort of, again, structural format, and when you can actually see what's in front of you, it gives you almost a checklist of things to go through. And it doesn't have to be big things like we'll talk about kind of later. When you can incorporate things into your calendar and into your day, and when you can actually, at the end of the day, check off something, you can say, oh yes, I did these things today. And then finally, for those of you who are socially isolating, maybe you're quarantined right now, or maybe you work from home on the regular, uh, structure is really important for maintaining focus. And especially if you're a student, um, I've chatted with some students already how it can be really difficult to maintain focus. This is why uh, implementing some stuff into your life can be so beneficial because it actually helps you to see bigger picture stuff, to be able to see kind of than um, seeing the tree in the forest, so to speak. So then you can kind of readjust your schedule from there. So we're gonna jump into what some structures uh, you should be considering implementing. And again, some of these are gonna look so basic and like they go without saying, uh, but they need to be said anyways. And some of them you might not have actually even thought of before. So we're gonna run through them and I'm just gonna to touch on each individual one. So first things first, we're gonna talk about previous commitments that you do have. So in this case, I'm kind of uh, tailoring this specific talk to students. So when you have schoolwork, um, again, unless you've cleared things with your professors or student academic success, or if you've withdrawn from classes totally, uh, schoolwork is kind of a non-negotiable. So again, making sure that you're checking in with your professors about things like assignments and looking at the syllabus, if the syllabus has been modified, but making sure that you're incorporating those into your calendar. Uh, and then to figuring out where you're scheduling homework time and so on kind of in between that as well. The second thing is if you if you are employed to make sure that you're honoring that commitment in that time frame as well. And then if you are working from home, honoring the time that you're actually getting paid to work and then stepping away from the time that you outside of time you're not getting paid to work and uh, making sure that you're setting up that boundary, which we'll talk in a bit. And then finally, any other commitments that you might have. So if you, uh, I'm not sure how many volunteer programs are running um, currently, but if you have any other thing where if you're on the regular, like Skyping somebody or Zooming somebody, 
making sure that you are adhering to those commitments and you're building those into your calendar as much as possible. If it becomes too much, that's when you need to start having conversations with people. So the next thing we're going to consider is sleep. And this is actually a huge one to consider right now because this is one of the things that's going to help you uh, stay alert, stay sharp, because a lack of sleep can impact your energy, mood, and just general body functioning. So sleep is actually our body's way of repairing itself every night. And it helps with things like long-term memory consolidation. So sleep is super important. Uh, I'm not going to get into all of the ideas and biology behind sleep, but just know that it's really important. And this is something that you should be actively considering uh, putting into your um, routines and your sleep times. Uh, it's recommended that adults actually get around six, seven to nine hours of sleep a night. Uh, and I have said this with an uh, asterisk at the bottom saying, if you routinely have difficulty with your sleep, uh, talk to your doctor and whatever platform that might be where you're able to connect accordingly. But the reason why seven to nine hours is because it's suggested that a circadian rhythm on average lasts um, oh, hold on. Sorry, not circadian rhythm. A, a REM cycle lasts about 90 minutes and you need approximately four REM cycles um, for your body to do all the things it needs to do. So that's why seven to nine. Uh, practicing good sleep hygiene. So uh, I maybe say this at some point during the rest of the presentation, but that means no screens before bed, uh, trying to use your bed uh, for sleep, uh, making sure uh, with the point below setting similar sleep time set setting similar times for sleep so just because you might have a class we're just going to use a class example at eight o'clock in the morning on Tuesdays and then a class at 10 o'clock in the morning on Wednesdays um, trying to keep that sleep wake up time the same so if you're waking up at 7 a.m for your class at on Tuesdays at 8 a.m you're still waking up at 7 a.m on the Wednesdays and you're trying to carry that out throughout the week same thing goes with your uh, going to sleep and like what time your bedtime is as well. And again, obviously honor kind of like what your body needs in terms of rest and making sure that if you feel tired and if you feel like you need to rest to do that, but the, um, there's a lot of benefit, including structure in terms of your actual sleep time. Uh, next thing we're going to consider is meals. And I said this in our time together with talking about anxiety and stress. If you're having issues with food security, please reach out to somebody at Ambrose or maybe a local community resource to make sure that you are getting the uh, meals that you need and uh, make sure that you're feeding yourself. So another uh, quick tip that you can do, if it's possible, depending if you're living by yourself, with roommates, with your family members, is trying to set regular meal times. So um, if you wake up generally encourage people to eat breakfast, don't skip breakfast. If you wake up and if your wake up time is at 7 a.m., um, say you're gonna eat breakfast by 8 a.m. and try to do that every single day, regardless of the day. And again, making sure that you are getting proper nutritional content within those meals. And again, setting regular meal times. So uh, other thing too with meal times, they can actually be another way of having us to be able to step away from our work and to be able to socialize, whether that's with their family members, a roommates, uh, if you, again, if you live by yourself or maybe you're a little bit disconnected in some capacity, try FaceTiming with a friend. I live by myself and there's been a few times where I'll actually have lunch with my friend over FaceTime. And it's really nice because it's just a good break in the day and just a, a quick way to unplug kind of from the work. Okay, so you'll see, actually, I'll jump back here, that I have leisure, self-care and socializing uh, split between uh, two categories. And sometimes I would probably normally lump them in together, but I've actually pulled them apart specifically for kind of the time that we're living in right now, because I think it's actually worth pulling them apart um, because I think they're both really vital categories. So when we're talking about leisure and self-care, uh, I recommend to try to schedule your self-care time or leisure time in advance. So not doing it saying like when I, uh, when I have this break in time, then I'll do it. Um, being really intentional with how much time you're actually giving yourself throughout a day, throughout a week, and just carving out non-negotiable time. So whether that's you're saying that, you know, Wednesday nights are my night off, this is my night with friends, or this is my night to take care of myself in three hours, I'm not doing homework, I'm not doing 
school work, regular work, uh, or anything like that. This is the night that I'm devoting to myself for this. Keep that, hold that time as sacred. And by scheduling yourself, your self-care time in advance, you kind of started to get into that rhythm and routine within your brain. So like, okay, hey, now is the time that we're unplugging. And I'll say this a couple of times through this presentation, I think, but your brain is actually more productive when you do take breaks. So when you're able to step away and to be able to do something that's completely different from maybe homework or uh, if you're working from home, then you're able to actually uh, come back to your work with maybe a little bit more of a fresh brain. And doing things that you enjoy can help to lower stress levels that you do have. So especially if you kind of run more on the anxious side by just, again, taking that step back and trying to find things that are going to fill your cup back up. Um, it makes it easier to kind of go forward and do the work that you need to do. And remember, you can't pour from an empty cup. So don't try to run yourself ragged by trying to get all the things done that you need to get done. With it being a really high intense time, it's really important that we're still practicing that self-care and that fun time. Socializing, and I think I said this in my anxiety workshop as well, Connecting with others is really important, regardless if you're introverted or extroverted, you need to be connecting with people. So uh, people who know that their friends are more introverted, I encourage you to still reach out. So if you're extroverted by nature, uh, bug your introvert friends. If you're more introverted by nature, try to make sure that you're actually connecting with at least one person a day. And same thing goes with the extroverted people as well. So this can include things like your family members, friends, classmates, maybe you have an online community that you're a part of, maybe you're part of a church community where you meet together regularly, stay connected as much as possible. And then reach out to others who you think might actually be struggling, or even if you have an inkling that it might be a really tough time for them, actively reach out. Again, know your limits with that, but make sure that you're actually checking in with those people. And finally, we're going to jump to exercise. Jump to exercise. Oh. Because uh, this is a really important one too, because when we're cooped up all day, again, if you're choosing to socially isolate, sometimes it can just be easy to just sit and not do anything. But it's really good if we're able to actually get our body moving to some capacity. So I encourage people to move at least once a day. And that's not just walking from your desk to the fridge or to the couch. That's actually getting up and whether you're following an exercise routine on Instagram, on Facebook, YouTube, anything like that, which there's tons of different, uh, I know in Calgary anyways, there's tons of different options for you to be able to access classes for free. So even if you're not necessarily doing that, um, get outside, go for a walk around the block, maybe go for a long walk. Uh, it's getting nicer. I don't want to speak too soon in Calgary anyways, where you can even bring your bike out now, uh, just trying different things, making sure that you're staying active. And even when you're working, maybe even trying to take a break, go for a quick lap around the, like a five minute lap around the block, just to get your body and your brain moving and making sure that you're actually getting uh, oxygen back into your body. And the recommendation is to do about 150 minutes of moderate to intense activity per week. Um, that's apparently math that I can't do right off the hop. Uh, we'll say three times a week, uh, 50 minutes, um, moderate to an intense activity. So. Uh, whatever is going to make sure that you're getting a little bit of a sweat to try to engage in something like that. But at minimum, make sure that you are moving, go outside and walk. That's still an accessible thing for us and get outside in nature, whatever that looks like for you. So the next thing that we're going to talk about are traps, because what is more important than talking about the, um, all the things that are going to steal our mind and our time away from maybe kind of what's in front of us right now. So I would say one of the biggest culprits is social media. And so I've seen actually a lot of people that have started deleting or deactivating, whatever the common term is, um, for things like Facebook and Instagram, because it just gets too distracting. Because it's one of those things that you find yourself scrolling through, and all of a sudden, 20 minutes has passed. And that's a pretty significant chunk of time. So one thing, and I'll, I lump that into phone as well, because maybe you play games, maybe you text a lot, which texting, again, texting is good if you're connecting, but if you're finding yourself texting and responding and Facebooking and all that stuff, and it's taking away from time that you need to do to get work, it's time to kind of reevaluate what that time actually looks like. So I don't know about Android users, but as iPhones, you can actually set yourself time limits of how much you're going to spend on each app. 
I have those time limits on my phone? Do I necessarily adhere to them all the time? Maybe not, but at least it gets you kind of thinking, saying, okay, uh, I've spent this much time on it already. If you're actually scheduling time in to check your phone or social media into your calendar, you can even say, you can set yourself a timer and say, okay, I'm gonna check Instagram for five minutes during this time spot. And then that way you, you know, your brain knows that when you take this break or you do this thing, um, okay, I actually am going to check Instagram later and I don't need to worry about it right now. Watching your gaming use as well. And I know I'm not a gamer, but I have played video games in the past and I have friends that game and it's really easy to get absorbed in it for hours on end. So again, being conscientious with that, maybe setting yourself a timer and dedicating saying, okay, at least I'm going to be aware of how much time I'm spending while I'm gaming. And then general procrastinating. And I am an absolute victim of this. Uh, if I see cleaning that needs to get done in my place, I'm going to start cleaning even if I have work to do. So making sure that, again, if you know that you are prone to procrastinate in some capacity, um, scheduling that into your time. So another thing that I used to do when I was doing my undergrad degree is what I call procrastinate baking. And so I would often make cupcakes, make cake pops and uh, elaborate cakes instead of studying. So build that into your schedule as much as you can, rather than just uh, like, okay, hey, I'm going to bake now. All that to say with all of these different things, if you do it, don't be hard on yourself. It's just one of those learning experiences that you can learn from in the future. Another thing to consider are actually building rituals into your schedule as well. So this might look different from person to person, but the idea is when you're actually building in a ritual, um, so it can just be a patterned way of doing things, it can actually help to reframe your brain into work mode, into social mode, um, and maybe into quiet time, self-care time. And by doing simple things to be able to transition, it basically tricks your brain maybe a little bit into kind of, again, transitioning into that time. So a couple of things to consider are your boundaries that you have um, with your rituals and then considering rituals for morning and evening and then rituals with school and work. So to start with boundaries, um, the talk again, technology. So rather than um, just being on your phone all of the time, say, okay, uh, scheduling in this time or like building in the ritual saying like, I'm going to check it. 45 minutes after I get up in the morning. So you might have the morning routine and say, okay, I'm going to check it, check social media for 20 minutes. And then that's going to be it. And that's going to be something that's kind of like an ebb and flow that your brain can actually expect for the rest of the day. And yeah, uh, with boundaries. So, so boundaries around technology are really important during this time. Cause again, if you're uh, socially isolating and you're cooped up at home, sometimes it's the quickest thing that we can grab and it's that instant gratification thing. So making sure you're setting boundaries with your technology and family and friends as well. If you, and your spouse, uh, whatever that looks like, if you're married as well. Uh, so it's really important, I was going to say, to set, set boundaries and then incorporate kind of into that ritual time and experience and be able to share with your roommates, friends, family members, whatever that looks like to say, this is what I need during this time to make sure that I'm getting my work done. And I ask that you honor that during this time. And sometimes that can be really hard. Say, for instance, if you are really fond of your family or really fond of your friends and you just want to hang out all the time. But again, it's kind of one of those things that pulls your attention away. And maybe you are not as fond of your friends, family, et cetera, by you putting up that boundary and saying, okay, hey, this is my time where I'm actually building this into my schedule of this is just a workspace. Again, I ask that you honor that because then it helps you to take a step back away from friends, family, et cetera. And use an agenda. So this is going to help. We're going to jump a little bit later to talking about what a template can possibly look like for you. But when you're scheduling things in accordingly and you get into the ritual of kind of following what's on your agenda, it can be really helpful when you're separating that work, schoolwork, and social life boundary. And I know that that's been a thing kind of for a couple of students that we've talked about that. So morning and evening rituals, this will actually help again, especially when it comes to things like sleep hygiene staying motivated. And it doesn't necessarily, again, have to be morning and evening. Maybe you have an afternoon ritual. Maybe you have coffee with people in the afternoon where you get together every day, every couple of days where it's like 2.45, you all take a break and you have coffee together. So my recommendation for the morning and evening rituals, and this again kind of goes along the idea with sleep hygiene, 
is following a pattern of when you go to sleep and when you wake up. So for instance, this is kind of, uh, I gave a couple of different ideas and this kind of is involving a little bit of like what I do for a morning ritual. So I make my, make coffee, I make my beds, brush teeth, shower, I'll maybe do some deep breathing and then I'll do some fun reading as well. And I'll say things that, um, one of the temptations uh, for a lot of people when they know that they're going to be working from home is just to stay in their sweats. Sometimes that ritual of actually changing out of maybe the leisure clothes and into work clothes or something that's maybe a little bit more casual, um, it kind of helps your brain to switch into work mode. And so again, it doesn't mean that you can't wear sweats, but maybe it might actually help you. So again, I'll say um, I try my best to make sure that I still am doing my hair, doing my makeup in the morning for days when I know that I'm going to work. If you find that that doesn't work for you, that's totally fine, but that might actually help for you to kind of get into a groove of making sure that you're going to work. Whatever is going to help you to transition into starting the day and then even ending the day as well. So again, reiterating at evening time, try to keep electronics out of your sleeping space or out of the reach of your hand grabs, uh, especially if you are one of those people that sleeps with your cell phone underneath your pillow, anything like that doing things like brushing your teeth, having a bath, reading a prayer, and just making sure that you're building that ritual into your ebb and flow of daily life. And finally, with work and school, try and designate a space where you do your school work, or again, if you work from home. Uh, I know that not everybody has the luxury of having access to multiple rooms, but even if you have, like, say for instance, your entire life revolves around your bedroom, even trying to find different spaces in your room or if it's orienting your chair a certain way or moving a desk or like sitting on one side of the floor, sitting on the other side of the floor and trying to separate that out. Um, again, same sort of thing. If you can like, if you have a laptop, close your laptop at a certain time of the day after you're done your schoolwork, put it in a drawer, put it out of sight. Uh, so then again, your brain has the capacity to shut off. Uh, if you do have access to more than one space in your house, try to separate your room and your workspace as much as possible. So maybe you have a kitchen table that you can do school work at, or perhaps you have a home office, whatever that might look like for you. And then designate a space where you can relax and no school work happens at all. So if, again, sometimes people are working with like being in their bedroom, but if you, um, if you do homework in your bed, make sure that you're actually getting out of your bed to do homework. So whether that's like you make your bed and then you sit on top of it, but if you're relaxing and you get under the covers, no schoolwork happens. So just finding something that works for you with that. And then allocate time. This kind of goes back up with the agenda and setting your boundaries. Allocating time designated specifically for schoolwork. So not just... Uh, class time and times where you're listening to lectures, but time you're building into your routine of when you're going to be doing homework. And again, I recognize we're coming up to final exam season. So sometimes things get a little bit more chaotic and free flowing, but trying as best as you can to make sure that you're carving time out specifically for school. And other quick tips around the idea of boundaries and rituals and all this sort of stuff is keep your space tidy. Uh, the more tidy that you can keep it, the more uh, clutter-free your mind is going to be and the easier it is you can find stuff and put stuff away at the end of the day as well, especially again, if you're staying in the same space, just putting things away. So again, your brain can mentally shut off. Keep a notepad handy when you're doing work. So this can be when you, if you think of all the other things that you have to possibly get done that day, write them down because you say, you know what, right now is my schoolwork time, but I know that I have to vacuum later today or do this thing or pick up this thing. Or if you have people that you're wanting to text, but you know that my, my socialization time isn't happening yet, you don't have to be that strict with it. But write that stuff down because again, you're kind of taking it out of your head and putting it onto a piece of paper. And again, take breaks. Make sure you're taking breaks. You're far more effective when you actually take breaks and you give your brain the opportunity to take a breath. So Build that in. Don't study for four hours at a time. Don't work for four hours at a time. Make sure you're getting up, stretch, take a break. And finally, we're just going to briefly run through a couple of different templates and examples of how you can structure your day. So you may choose to be systematic or rigid with your structure, or you can build in wiggle room. Um, like I said, be to be gentle with yourself, be compassionate if you don't really necessarily get done what you're wanting to or doing things like the most perfect 
Maybe you're not doing the push up challenge, and that's okay. Uh, doing things that are going to work for you and uh, be honest with yourself and with what you need. So, if you're the type of person where you thrive on structure, keep that in place. And if you know that you need a little bit more accountability, maybe it's something to consider of actually having a little bit more of a rigid agenda. Uh, but again, making sure that you're building in time for yourself and to be able to recharge, to socialize, to connect. So the first thing, and this is maybe a little bit too late because we're in March of 2020 right now, but we, uh, I think it's student academic success generally that wonderful group of people, might I add, wonderful group of people. If you have any academic issues, questions, so on, please get in touch with them. They're so wonderful to connect with and just access them. What a great resource we have. Uh, but to do an academic semester planner, so this is really helpful when you're looking at your course syllabi and seeing what uh, needs to get done and what dates that need to, what dates that you need to do them. So then you have it all on one chunk and one page and rather than being surprised when you're going month by month or week by week and saying, oh no, I've got four assignments due this week. When you look at it at a glance, you can, can actually start to compartmentalize your time and say, okay, I need to work on it two weeks in advance because I have these amount of things that need to get done. So uh, if you're planning on returning to school next year, this is an indispensable thing for you to be able to lean on in terms of making sure that you're planning out your assignments accordingly. Uh, the next thing to consider, I actually mix, mix these two up, so I'm going to jump forward here. Try and first look at a weekly schedule. So weekly schedules can be helpful with things like assignments, if you're still working, goal setting and things like socializing. So if you have a group of friends that maybe you game with virtually, or maybe you have some sort of like Facebook um, video chat that you guys are all doing, and then that way you can say, okay, hey, Saturday night at 7 p.m. we're all getting together, Monday, this sort of thing. So you're kind of setting more like goals for the week, and it can kind of be a little bit more of a motivating factor to say, okay, hey, I'm gonna do this this day, uh, make sure maybe I'm more like, front loading in terms of assignment work, whatever. So you can actually see kind of that broad scope of what actually needs to get done and make sure that you're actually reserving yourself time off as much as you possibly can, even if it's a half day. Okay, now we're gonna jump back actually to daily schedule. And this again is so helpful with routine. So if you wake up at seven o'clock in the morning, and then 7.30, you're eating, uh, you're doing whatever you need to get done. And then 8 a.m. is when you get class. And then you just kind of go along here and say, okay, this is what I absolutely need to get done today. And here's when I'm going to build in my self-care time. And here's when I'm going to hang out with my family or my friends. Um, here's a little bit more flex time that I can do for maybe fun stuff. And then 9 p.m., say, for instance, I know I live at a fantasy land thinking that everyone goes to bed at 10 o'clock. But 9 p.m. is when I'm going to start to begin my uh, nighttime ritual of going to sleep because I go to bed at 10. So anyways, and this can be super helpful for building in things like your break times as well. So say you have uh, a break in between your 9 a.m. class and your 11 a.m. class. There's not a break in between there. Yes, yeah, so you have 15 minutes of a break between your 9 a.m. class and the uh, 11 a.m. class. This is all entirely hy hypothetical at this point being really intentional with that 15 minutes that you have between lectures. And so whether again, like you're getting out and you're running around the block really quick, uh, you're dedicating only five minutes to checking social media um, and doing that kind of stuff that can be really helpful when you're doing that. And I'll say again with the, I don't know if I actually said this, so I apologize if this is redundant and if I've already said this to some degree, but make sure with the, uh, when you're checking your phone and doing that sort of stuff, don't use that as a break per se. Um, it's because you're basically just moving from one screen to another. Actually, when you're taking breaks, try as much as you can to actually step away from your phone for at least a little period of time. What some people find effective is if they're studying or if they have to get long periods of work done is either putting their phone out of arm's reach or putting it in a different room and then setting a timer of when they can actually go check their phone. Because the temptation is when the phone is sitting there, it's easy to pick it up. Log out of uh, social media on your computer. And again, same sort of thing. Set yourself up time where you can actually dedicate to um, checking those things kind of at a later time. Oh, we're bouncing all over the place now. So finally, treat yourself. Uh, I said this before, I'll say it again. 
go easy on yourself during this time. Um, reward yourself for small tasks and for the large accomplishments. So if you manage to read for 20 minutes solid, say like, wow, I read for 20 minutes. That was pretty awesome. Uh, maybe you treat yourself to a snack that is healthy. Um, or just again, like even just acknowledging the fact where like I was able to maintain focus for this period of time. And even for the large accomplishments. So say for instance, if you finish a paper, say like, man, I finished a paper and you know, maybe it hasn't sunk in yet that I'm done, but you know what, I'm going to uh, call a friend right now, or I'm going to um, go for a run around the block. I don't know, whatever you do to reward yourself. Uh, remember to take breaks and um, remember to, if you don't need to adhere so tightly to your schedule all the time, just remember again, the idea of go easy on yourself and that um, we're, we're all learning, we're gonna get through this. And um, yeah, to just like ebb and flow with your schedule. But if you can be systematic, that's great. But make sure that you're building in some wiggle room into your time. Set small goals and set measurable goals as well. So things that you're, um, say for instance, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna finish reading 15 pages by the end of today, rather than like, I have to read 120 pages by the end of today. Uh, or like I'm gonna read, 300 pages by the end of the week. Breaking it up into small chunks can actually be a lot more effective. So then you can actually measure saying like, hey, I've accomplished this. And then that way you can gain, again, that sense of mastery over your goals that you have in place. And finally, and this is so, so important, uh, regardless of structure or not, remember that nobody else has everything together. I've talked to so many people that say like, man, other people make this look so much easier. Everyone is saying that about every other person. Uh, don't let social media fool you. Don't let uh, the way that people talk about things fool you. A lot of people are trying to figure this thing that we call life out even more so now that we've got this extenuating circumstance happening to us. So if you look at somebody and you say, man, they've got their stuff together, not necessarily. Um, you're doing what you can. What you can. You're doing a good job. Um, and we support you. We're, we're here for you for as, as a community too. So if you need help with anything during this journey, or if you need encouragement too, because again, sometimes this can be really discouraging. Um, just connect with somebody from student life or somebody that you trust and say like, Hey, I'm going through a bit of a tough time right now and could really use some help. If you need some accountability with your structure or anything else, please get in touch with one of us and we'd be happy to walk through it with you uh, and then even stay accountable to your friends be like how are you doing this like what do you think about this and bounce ideas off of one another and as always please make sure that you're staying tuned to the my.ambrose.edu landing page this is where you can find all of the content related to the rest of your academic semester on this page specifically and it's bumping different links and different options that you have to connect with different staff members things that are dealing with your academics, things that are dealing with your wellness. This is a main funnel landing page that you can access and we encourage you actively. This is gonna be updated on a frequent basis, so stay tuned. Uh, and thank you so much for tuning in again. Um, looking forward to connecting with you. And again, if you have any questions, anything like that, uh, absolutely please connect with myself or one of the people in Student Life or Student Academic Success. And we're all in this together. Um, be healthy, stay healthy, um, keep your physical distance as best as you can and stay connected.